Today's presentation is all about what is visually pleased. Hello, hope you're doing okay. Tim Sandal back with another video. And we've done a few videos about disinfection and cleaning. But I'd like to focus on this subject on what is visually clean. So this is something we can take a closer look at because it's an important um, subject and one that's expected within the GMPs. So let's go to the uh, presentation. Okay, so visually clean, what does it mean? Is that supposed to rhyme? Maybe sometimes. Okay, so visually clean. So it's um, mentioned in the GMPs, so the FDA, CFRs and in EU GMP. And I pulled out a quote on the screen which is from Annex 15 of EU GMP. And this is um, talking about the necessity to make sure that something is visually clean. And there's also an expansion of what's required for cleaning validation which is more specialised where you're going to use uh, different types of light, um, mirrors, digital cameras and all that sort of stuff. But we're focusing on um, in the clean room itself and um, making sure that when we've undertaken a cleaning activity that we can see that the surface is in fact clean. So what we're focusing on is that the equipment we're using for pharmaceutical processing has been inspected for visual cleanliness. Okay, that's great, but what does that actually mean? Well, it means that we're looking for absence of residues, and by residues, we're talking about um, process residues, which are often powder-like um, substances. So when, say, if we're using um, a proteinaceous product, then you'll see um, bits of dried protein, or little powdery specks, things like that, where we need to see none of that at all. We can also have residues left from cleaning agents, uh, detergents or disinfectants, and more often detergents, but disinfectants can also leave um, residues. And these appear more as um, little spots or smears, so we need to have absence of them as well because they can interfere with um, the process and residues of the detergent can interfere with the disinfectant or residues of the next disinfectant can interfere with the detergent or another disinfectant. These chemicals can all interact with each other so when we get these um, residues either we need to clean more effectively or we need to use a water rinse. And we can have problems spotting this because we can have uh, coloration effects on steel and also when we have scratches or other damage it makes it harder to see that something really is as clean as it should be. So it's important to make sure that when we're looking at whether something is clean that we're doing so in the appropriate level of light. And most clean rooms are configured to have a good quality of light but if for some reason uh, lights aren't working and things like that then we need to make sure that we have a engineer fix the lights. So clean rooms tend to have lights of 700 lux or above so lux is a scale of light intensity so a typical office will have um, about three to four hundred lux a clean room will have a higher level of lux and also we need to bear in mind that what we can actually see. So generally if we have good eyesight we can just about make out around 10 micrograms of a residue per square centimetre of surface. And that's kind of what we mean by digitally clean. We can't see anything above that either for the powdery like substance or for the smears and spots that we just discussed. Um, it's also important to note that residues will look different depending upon the type of material. Now most of the materials we are looking at are stainless steel but there will also be other types of materials as well where we have plastics and rubbers and, and the like. And it's more difficult to spot um, residues on 
polymer type materials than it is on stainless steel so we need to bear that in mind when we're looking at other types of surfaces that are in fact not steel. We also need to be mindful that as a surface ages it becomes harder to spot the residues as well so older stainless steel is harder to see those residues than it is with um, nice brand new super shiny stainless steel. It's also important when we're doing the inspections that we don't have stainless steel that looks like it does on the slide. So this is a very scratched surface. It's really important that stainless steel remains um, nicely polished. So while we have scratched stainless steel, we either need to get the surface repassivated or repolished re or even replaced because um, the more scratched the surface becomes, one, the harder it is to see whether it's visually clean, but we're also creating crevices that microorganisms could reside into. And um, it just becomes harder and harder. So um, certainly um, where there's maintenance downtimes or shutdown periods, then all this kind of scratch stainless steel needs to be um, addressed and dealt with. Okay, so fairly quick video this week we've looked at visually clean the importance of residues how different types of materials will leave different sorts of residues and um, also with aging surfaces and the difference between polymers and stainless steel so I'm Tim Sandal and um, I'd like to thank you for watching the video and uh, for your attention and having a close look and keeping an eye on all the things that matter. Cheerio, bye!